In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the TeclaTeds API to define the input for a concrete beam design, including the design forces. Then I'll show you how to query the design results, and finally, how to run the whole process without the calculations user interface. I've already got a project, and I've got some code to read in the input parameters for the section to use for a concrete beam design, and the code which runs the actual calculation. To find out which variables I need to use for the results, I can refer to the variables documentation. As well as the documentation for the input variables and the forces that I want to use in this case, you'll also find the output variables, i.e. the results for the calculation. So I've got everything I need to work out what I need to use. So let's start by extending our code so that we read in the positive moment, the negative moment, the positive quasi-permanent moment, the negative quasi-permanent moment, the maximum shear, and the design shear force. For each of those inputs, I'll then assign the variable using the API setVar method for all the information I want to design define for the design. Finally, after the calculation is completed, I want to query each of the result values using the getVar method. So I'll read the top reinforcement, the bottom reinforcement utilization, and the shear reinforcement utilization. And then finally, I'll just output those results to the console so I can see them at the end of my program. So let's now build our solution. There are no errors. And we'll start our program. Program and enter the design parameters that we want to use, including those design forces that we've now set up to be carried into the design. The TEDS calculation will now run and the user interface for the calculation will appear. And as we can see here, the input values we have used are all filled out in the user interface. And when we complete the design, note the utilization of 1.459 for the top reinforcement. That should now be output to the console window. The final improvement we'll make to our program is to add an option that allows the user interface of the calculation to be shown or to be hidden. Obviously, if we hide the user interface, then we can, could be running the calculation multiple times with the input that's defined. Again, to find out more information about this, we can refer back to the variables documentation and at the start here, the mention of the variable underscore calc UE. This is a standard variable supported by all the calculations, and it allows you to run the calculation with the user interface for a value of one, with the interface hidden if it's a value of zero, but the interface is only hidden if all the input data is valid. If any of the input validation fails, then the user interface will still appear. There is also a third option, minus one, which completely disables the user interface. Not all calculations support that, but where they do, please remember that there will be no validation on your input if the val user interface is completely disabled. So let's now go and add that to our code. So we'll now add one extra input, which is whether the user wants to see the user interface or not. And then we'll assign one more variable, which is the calc UE variable, either to one or zero depending on the user's preference. So let's again now build our solution. And run our program. We'll enter all of our design information again. And this time we'll choose not to show the user interface. So the TEDS calculator will still run. It will run the calculation specifying all of our input data, but the results will be immediately returned without showing the user interface and shown 
here in the console window.